here is fucking wild. What is going on? Hey, welcome or welcome back to the channel today. We're checking out the seventh episode from Better Call Saul. From season one, this is Bingo. Thoughts on the last episode are probably going to be back there. I say that because I just watched episode six, which was 5-0, and now I'm watching seven. Have not edited the previous episode. We're just trucking right along here. Now, since I haven't combed through it and edited, I don't have a finer understanding of it. It just happened. It's super fresh. But it was a Mike Airman Trout centric episode. We had a little bit of Jimmy in there and, and talking to the daughter-in-law. But most of it, I would say, would be uh, a flashback. The, the big chunk of it was what happened with the officers surrounding his son's death. And we found out. And then at the end, he confessed to the daughter-in-law about what happened. Except he did not really admit to the shooting. She said what happened to them, and he said, you know, can you live with it? So that's like a soft confirm. Like, I didn't, I didn't say yes type deal. Yeah, and I had mentioned that, like, the leftovers and even The Walking Dead had done episodes where it wasn't the main focus or it went off to a side character for a little bit. I don't really mind those as long as it's not, like, you know, two or three weeks between episodes it's not a problem for here because the show is out i can watch it whenever there there is no waiting you know as demonstrated by i'm watching six and seven right now for the main pace of a show like they i don't think they should stray too far for too long even even with a beloved character like mike and establishing some backstory for him and some context i wonder how it's gonna play in though it just can't be like a little one-off episode for him to need Saul to get in better with Saul. Or, sorry, Jimmy. So I don't know how this is all going to pan out, but ultimately it's going to lead to, I'm sure, <laughs> Mike eventually working for Jimmy down the road. All right, that's enough rambling. That's enough recapping. Let's get into it. This is episode seven from season one of Better Call Saul. Bingo. William Hill. Frederick Carter. Are, is he going to be represent, representing these people, or is he going to be wanted soon? So what is this about? They already had their thing last episode. Once again, I do all the talking. As if Mike does any of the talking. Is this it? I will take that as a yes. Both of you. Whoa, whoa, where's this coming from? You're the one who spilled the coffee, you ambulance-chasing piece of shit. So, and walking across the parking lot just now, boom. On the ground. There's a notepad. Plain as day. Oh, right, right. I right. Can surmise, you accidentally dropped it, Detective. Now, guys, Such that's... Such bullshit. <laughs> that's all we know. Wait till I get you back to Philadelphia. I'm confused. The state of Pennsylvania can extradite people for returning lost property? Wow. That is one bold <laughs> legislature. Oh, the you Keystone State. Me, now that it's all out in the open, maybe your daughter-in-law, maybe she's got something to tell me. He had to have prepped her. Like, they're going to come after you. Say nothing. Thanks, as in three's a crowd. You can go now. Uh. You're not talking to my client without me. Yeah, he is. Please leave now. Off the record speak, what are we doing? He's young, looking to make his mark. I like him. I'm, I'm looking for Easter eggs and characters we've seen before. So maybe you should talk to her before we do. Talk They're not centered in the frame or on the wanted poster and the wanting posters Fensky taking up so much was. space. There's a lot of people we both know and think that Fensky got what was coming to him. Hoffman, too. That old precinct was a sore. Was? It, has it gotten better? He's just got to learn, that's all. Some rocks you don't turn over. I was speaking to a friend. <laughs> you were speaking to a homicide detective who flew 2,000 miles to investigate a double murder. I appreciate your help. Go home, go to bed, send me your bill. Oh, I'm sending you my bill. Is that a Chuck, caterpillar in a cocoon? Like, are they trying to suggest that Chuck. Jimmy is doing his transformation? Chuck? Hopefully Chuck didn't transition Chuck, to not being alive. 112, 113. Holy shit, what are you doing? Shh. 115, 120, go. 
Go inside. Working himself up. I mean, I'm glad he's trying. The hell was that? Working up my resistance to the UVs. The hell was that? <laughs> Probably needs that vitamin D anyway. I've been attempting to build up a tolerance for electromagnetic fields. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Yeah, it's like um, you know, like taking small doses poison. of poison. Poison. Yeah. It's a real thing. Anyway, Nervous system gets used to it after a while. I got up to two minutes today. Jesus, Chuck. Yeah. Two days ago, I could barely stand 30 seconds. I'm trying to get up to five minutes by next week. That is just... Remarkable, actually. No, I can't go on like this. I have to find a way to get better. I've got to. I have to get back to work. Sitting here, I need to be useful again. It's not like he ran out there because Jimmy was coming. Jimmy came over and he was already doing this shit, so it's... I believe him. What's all this? It's just some case files. I'm out of room at the office. I don't want to leave them in the car. There's a lot of sensitive information. Business is that good? <laughs> it's booming. Streets of gold. Does he need an assistant? Need Jimmy need an assistant? Some... Sorry. I am just working with these seniors. Maybe the dementia is contagious, huh? <laughs> 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 Would you know? Would you realize? Oh, God. See you tomorrow. Same time. Oh, yeah. Files in the foreground. Let's take a peek. <laughs> but he I, he also doesn't want to violate privacy, but he's he's jonesing. <laughs> he's feeding for it. And he knew it would... The seniors have been very good to me. I've been meaning to expand. Okay, it's a work site. I've been on many of these. It's a clean slate. Put the uh, reception desk right here. Uh, get some comfortable seating for the clients. It's not some claustrophobic little closet that smells like acid. I don't see any data low voltage drops for internet. I don't see any access points on the ceiling grid. Crochet runner for the table. Rocking chairs all around? Yes. Make it look like the front of a Cracker Barrel, huh? <laughs> now you're talking. He was saying, why don't you work for someone who appreciates you? Is, is he trying to... Get you. And uh, I want you to see this one. Mm, here it is. A corner office. <laughs> it's the best! way better than the other one. <laughs> you think? Uh, yeah, who goes in here? Because I'd be all up in here if I were you. Glad to hear you say that yeah. because... The corner office. you got to go with the corner office. I was saving it for someone. Who? Well, my partner. Well, you said you were interested in elder law. That's... That is so... Mm. Thank you. Really. Okay. I figured out who Kim looks like. Someone I worked with What's in high school. Now? Playing with ideas. So I had the extra office and everything. Yeah, so. no, I get it. It'll be here when you're ready, Kim. I know this is the last thing you want to hear. I think your chances the of getting a ruling from a jury are very slim. Frankly, we've worked very hard to stave off an arrest. Flight risk. We, we were practically in our own backyard. What kind of deal? These clueless, annoying yeah, fucking people. We have arrived at an arrangement, which would include 16 months in a county facility. 16 months. Down from 30 years. Yes. And you most likely wouldn't serve all of it. There's no money. I told you Craig is innocent. Handcuffs are coming on, lady. There are drug dealers and murderers walking the streets, but instead of going after them, they want to put an innocent man in jail and go to jail for a year and a half. But your other choice, that is no choice at all. We're good people, so we should be allowed to do wrong. We're good people, so we shouldn't be held accountable. We're good people, so we did, Ugh. You're fired. It won't be necessary. We will no longer be requiring your services. Yeah, it's not personal. She is taking her husband straight to jail, man. Oh, 70. Oh, 70. Oh, yeah. 70's a good age. He's, pl right. he's playing bingo with him. <laughs> B6. Lucky B6. Just like the vitamin. Alright, which you should be taking. Bingo! Oh, we have a winner. Congratulations, miss. You've won a... Um, what do we have? He even has the microphone that they used. Who was the guy on the game show? He used that mic specifically. Lee Davis here. With $100, now a chance for over $5,000. Uh, I'm going to take a short break because somebody needs legal help. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Um, one moment, please. Deja vu. Hello again. Good to see you. Oh, shit. Well, we would like to hire you as our attorney, Mr. McGill. 
Wow. That's a 180 on before. Really? We want no jail time. Zero. Craig is innocent and we expect you to prove that. We disagree. She says we, we a lot. It's more like she, not we. We're very sorry. About that. We thought long and hard about it and um we and, you know given I hope he declines them. I hope he's in a position to where he doesn't need them. Since we last spoke, I've changed my area of specialization. So I concentrate on elder law now. But we've already paid you a retainer. Oh, shit. Right. I totally forgot about that. I found something that belongs to you again. Yeah, what? Who? Picture the 25th hour starring Ned and Maude Flanders. <laughs> Oakley Dokley. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Cuckoo Bananas just offered me the plum job of defending them. I know this is a lot to ask, but you have to convince them to come back to HHM. This is their absolute best bet. Yeah, fucking 30 years down to 16 months. Please. You got me. You, you, you got me. Tell me about this deal. I highly encourage you to go back to HHM. I'm certain they would welcome you with open arms. No, we're not going back there. They were incompatible. To your reality, to your fictional uh, existence. I doubt I could get you a deal as good as the one she already has. Okay, we don't want a deal. There is no money with which to make a deal. <laughs> you made many excuses justifying your possession of said money. It's there. It exists. It just, please, for my own sanity. <laughs> please break it down, man. Apologize to Ms. Wexler, and for Christ's sakes, take the deal. If there were any money... Lady, uh, enough! If... <sighs> there would have to be a full accounting of it. Every penny would have to be present. That includes the 30000 Craig, yes, he gets okay. it. 30000 I thought they only... I didn't think they gave him that much. Together. You can't promise them no jail time. That's ridiculous. <laughs> How are you going to get it thrown out or, you know... You're going to punish her just because you lost those two batshit kettlemans? You notice I'm not exactly crowing over how I snaked them away from you. Jimmy? Here are your files. I'm not going to discuss my employee policies with you. Paper is heavy, too. Yeah, paper is just w wood blocks cut up in the thin sheets. It's just a big block of wood he's dragging. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Oh, meeting spot. Hello, Kim. That prick firing you? Sounds like it. Best case scenario is my two-year plan just became a ten-year plan. After I worked my ass off finagling with the DA, and it's just like gone. There's yeah. gotta be a way. They both know he's guilty. There has to be a way. Jimmy knows they have the money. Here it is. To conceal the source of money as by channeling it through an intermediary. To, con to conceal that the source of money. Doesn't really help us, Michael. Mike, I don't understand why he staked out there that long. Just chowing down on apples, waiting. Boom! <laughs> Honey, look what I found. Oh my god, where? Yeah, wait a minute. Does Jimmy have Mike out here? Because Mike's involvement... Okay, so the kids know about the money. So you're gonna put it with the rest of the money? Is that what we're doing here? Scoping it out? Oh, that's why he put something on the bills earlier. I couldn't tell what he was washing it with or covering it with. It's so we'll see what uh, what room she took it to. Jesus, what are you doing? The right thing. Am I correct in assuming we're now square? Square. Oh, instead of billing him for the service, he's just doing him a favor. Doing this side job. Oh, I love what you've done with the place. You have news about our case? Do they know the money's gone yet? Might I suggest that you go check on that money you insist you didn't take? <laughs> in the upstairs bathroom, under the sink? I don't like delusional people. Like, I know what my faults are. I know what my wrongdoings are. I know what my choices have and haven't been. These people are just... No, 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 no. They're not in reality. What did you do with it? By it, you mean... Where? <laughs> the money that you don't have? Oh, on its way to the DA's desk. Right about now. What? You stole from us. Whoop. 
arrest. We will have you arrested. I, I can see how upset you are. And Your brain isn't working. It's not a good day. You and logic are. But think about what you just said. But the bribe was. We're back to calling it a bribe. Ooh. Yeah. That Ooh. implicates you as well. They Both could, parents locked away. What'll happen with the kids? I will not be treated this way. Betsy. The kids. No. <laughs> our, 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 our little precious reality that we generated. I love when shit gets checked. I love when bubbles get popped. I like when reality washes over people. Just washes away all the shit. I got no problem with it. Getting Kim her job back. The clients. Hey, hey. Delivery. Back in my catering sales days, we had clients that like wanted to rent out a banquet room and we quoted them a price and they'd storm out. Then they come back a couple weeks later. It's like, oh, oh, it's crazy out there, isn't it? Trying to find banquet space. Oh. Is he trying to fantasize it or imagine it, you know? Or does he not think it's gonna work for him? Those doors don't fuck around. I hope he was fucking with the drywall. This has got to be a confliction of him wanting to do the right thing or be good, but also... Law officers of James M. McGill, how may I direct your call? Good episode. All right, let's get to these credits. Okay, episode seven from season one, bingo! Jimmy's new clients put him at a personal and professional crossroads, so he calls in a favor for some covert assistance. Okay? Yeah, I cannot stress how much the Kettlemans annoy me. Their delusion, they're just holier than thou. They're like, there are criminals out there. There are, bitch, <laughs> you're the criminal. Yeah, so some of the Philadelphia stuff with Matt crossed over and has followed Mike to Albuquerque, but it seemed like Jimmy got him good and, you know, away from the cops, at least for now, at the beginning of the episode. But then, you know, your bill is in the mail, bill me. I'm pretty sure that turned into just do me this favor and steal this money out of their home. And like Jimmy said, thanks for not taking off to the Bahamas. Their working relationship, I'd say it started. He did a side job for him, you know, breaking and entering and apprehending that money. It's like you can't call in the stolen money. So it's like she's delusional. She's crazy, Mrs. Kettleman. And because she gave him the bribe that is involvement with her and... Now, if they're both on the hook, you know, the kid angle, like, I, I, it's, it's, I don't want to say a low blow or a, a cheap trick, but it's like, what'll happen to the kids, or your kids will go here, or what happened to you, it's like, you leverage that against a parent, you know, you're gonna, it's, it's cheating. <laughs> no, but I, I understand it, you know, if they're both in trouble, what happens to the kids, they'd probably be good off, or with family or something, but... They obviously, the Kettlemans, don't want to split up the kids, split up the family. Absolutely. So at least the husband kind of had a little sense to him and was like, we got to take the deal. And then, you know, they were dropped off back at the office with Kim. So hopefully she gets her job, her station, her position back. As much as Saul, Jimmy, would like her to work with him. And that's probably what that was at the end because he went into the corner office and started kicking around. It's like he wants her to work with him. It would be great. And then she's kind of like let go, but then doing the right thing, you know, to, to get her her job back. And that's that's costing him on a personal level. But if it's lawyers, you know, all, all the blood sucking jokes that there are out there and they're not human. And <laughs> it's like how early into a lawyer's career does that stuff boil off? And, you know, I, I just say that because I know for some law, it just becomes about winning. Like, they have no care about the client. There's no emotional attachment because they've got so many clients. It's just, it's not them going to jail. They're still getting paid regardless. So <laughs> it becomes personal and you like judges or other attorneys and you just want to, you know, you're, it's just, ah, people, I hate people. Yeah, I can only say it so many times. People were a mistake. Yeah, I don't want to say there's not too much going on in these episodes, but it's like one or two characters will follow at a time or threads it's not like it's it's not like with game of thrones where there's different families and different houses and it's like each one is working towards something like i feel like these episodes 
are very contained. Like, it was just Mike and Jimmy, you know, and then Jimmy and the Kettlemans. With a little Jimmy and Kim. It's just three threads, or one episode might be, you know, Oh yeah, Chuck! I forgot about Chuck! He was out in the sunlight, he's getting better. But I feel, I feel like these episodes are... They, they don't wander far from whatever they're going to be about. And I kind of like that. Like, it, it puts a lot of focus on the moment. That we start the episode working towards something, we end, and then, you know, you know what to expect on the next episode. And I've been appreciating that with this show. Now, it might get wider, it might get crazier as things go on. But I don't know that yet. We're still in season one. But that's going to do it for me for now. Thank you all so much for being here. These two episodes I've watched today were a lot of fun. I may watch a third episode later today, but you won't see it for a week or two, so irrelevant to right now. Thanks for being here. Hope this is worth your time, and goodbye.